We are joined by our senior counsel for global affairs, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Uh, Secretary Pompeo, I want to go right to this. We've been talking about the Ben and Jerry's issue. I know people kind of, you know, they hear this say, what, what's going on with the, the secular they're talking about? Ice cream, but this is as you, Ben and Jerry's, which makes political statements, and you know you can buy it or not. And people can choose that on their own. But they've been in the news because they announced that they will no longer sell their ice cream in what they call the quote occupied Palestinian territories. It's a big movement for the BDS movement, which uh, Secretary Pompeo, I, I think you effectively with the Trump administration had sidelined over these last few years because of the policies in place when you were Secretary of State, the Abraham Accords. This move by the new administration. Do you think, I, I mean, they did, they, they'd say we're not going to take away the First Amendment rights, but we don't support BDS. But do you think we're going to see another resurgence of the BDS movement, uh, that they're going to find more friends? Well, Jordan, I think it's almost certainly the case that companies around the world will say that this administration is not full-throatedly in support of Israel and the relationship between the United States and Israel. And they'll go back to the, the practices that they had before the Trump administration. Look, we, we, not, we not only made clear... Uh, that these kinds of activities were unacceptable, that they were an attack on the Zionist project, that they had tinges of anti-Semitism built into them by the very nature of the BDS movement. But we made clear we ripped off the Band-Aid on 40 years of U.S. policy and made unambiguous that Judea and Samaria were rightful parts of the state of Israel, that uh, Israel is not an occupying nation. This is not apartheid. This is the lone democracy in the Middle East. Those clear statements, those bright lines made the state of Israel stronger and it made these BDS movements not only appear but actually have to acknowledge that the actions they were taking were deeply against the Jewish homeland and were anti-Semitic. You know, one of the things, Mike, that I, I've thought about on this, and, and it's not just Ben and Jerry's, but Ben and Jerry's, the, the, the tragedy of that situation is, uh, and there, there may well be some legal action taken on behalf of this franchisee in Israel, but the you got the company coming out with this occupied Palestinian ter territory determination as if they're the uh, you know some international legal tribunal which they're not. They they forget this is Israeli sovereign land. We represent uh, one of the major uh, what they call settlements. Been there for decades now, and there's like twenty five thousand or thirty thousand people, and it's called Gush Etzion. Has a storied history in uh, uh, Israeli uh, War of Independence. I mean, they were like the la they were the last protecting area. Uh, to keep the invading forces out of Jerusalem. It's a, a very interesting story, but it's a huge, I mean, there's university there. These are not little towns. These are, these are, these are significant developments and they call them settlements only because they were, they were developed after the 67 war. And so, like I said, some of them are 30, 40, 50 years old. But when you successfully negotiated the Abraham Accords and we saw this regional cooperation with the Israelis neighbor, Israel's neighbors. Then a move like this kind of counters that the narrative, but it's really a question of governmentally, we have to maintain the relationship with Israel. And I would hope, I was hoping, it doesn't seem to be the case, that they would try to build on the Abraham Accords, this administration, but I'm, I'm not so sure about that right now. You know, Jay, it, it breaks my heart. I thought they would immediately acknowledge that the peace that had broken out between these Arab states and Israel, this war and peace, this acknowledgement of Israel's right to exist would be the basis for how the Biden administration would move forward with Israel, and that there would be other countries join. But, you know, they won't even utter the words Abraham Accords. It's, it's really quite stunning to see peace brokered by one administration and another administration just walking away from trying to build on that. But your, your point is very well taken on these settlements, and this is really important for your listeners to know. These, these places that you described, they use this word settlements very intentionally. It's as if they're temporary and it is a hostile takeover of this land. But these, this, I was the first Secretary of State to actually go to Judea and Samaria. These are, these are Israeli lands. Right. Re remember, this West Bank contains places like cities that your listeners will know, like Bethlehem and Jericho. Th these, are, these are important places. These are not settlements. This is Israeli sovereign territory. And I was, I was really, when I became Secretary of State, it was remarkable to see the resistance inside, frankly, the State Department and elsewhere in the United States government to the common sense set of understanding that Israel is not an occupying power. But then you have these corporations jumping in on it, Jordan. It's, just, it's outrageous, really. It is. I mean, we have this situation now where you've got a corporate, uh, you know, 
American corporation, but owned by a multinational corporation, and they're trying to have it both ways. Please keep selling it, but, but don't here. sell it here. So they're okay with selling it to Israelis, who are supposedly being the, they're bad, but they they don't want to give up all their business there. And they they I think they've stepped into it. And again, if you you can go look and see, I've seen it on social media. There are people engaged in their own private boycotts uh, in the United States. Of, and, and if you look at yeah. the, your grocery store, Ben and Jerry's might be piling up right now in some parts of the country because of of a, a host of political statements leading to this one, which I think probably pushed a lot of people to the edge. Yesterday on the broadcast, uh, Mike, we were talking about uh, issues with China. You just posted a new article at uh, ACLJ.org called The United States Must Assert Principles of Deterrence in Response to Mounting Cyber Attacks. Um, how should the administration uh, face China and Russia, for that matter, on these cyber attacks? Jay, the central thesis is this. These cyber attacks are attacks. And, and once you start talking about them in that way, once you say these are acknowledged attacks by nation state actors or actors inside of nation states that are hostile to the United States, we must respond to them as we would any other kind of attack. So that means developing a responsive strategy. It means developing a diplomatic outreach. It means prepared to conduct the defensive measures one needs to protect the systems and uh, processes to the cyber world here in the United States and that around the world. And then finally, it means a deterrence model. Just as President Reagan spoke about peace through strength, that would apply to cyberspace as well. We have to be prepared to respond against the attacker and against the place that the attacker launches the attack from. We need to hold those sovereigns accountable for attacks that come from their uh, sovereign nation and impose real costs, costs at a sufficient level that will adequately deter those kinds of attacks and force them to do the hard work of ensuring that these attacks don't take place on the United States. The the final question for you today, uh, Secretary Pompeo, we saw that DOJ drop charges uh, on Monday against five uh, academics with ties to the Chinese military. They're Chinese nationals. Now, we've talked before about the, the Chinese Communist Party kind of infiltrating our universities do you think it's the wrong message right now, I mean, to send to China that we're going to drop charges when we know that these individuals were, uh, as they would, uh, told the FBI, were instructed to report back to Beijing? I, I know an awful lot about these cases. I want to be very careful. Let me make sure everyone is crystal clear. These individuals committed fraud as they came into the United States. They didn't declare connectivity to the Chinese uh, security services. Mm -hmm. They, they were properly indicted. They should have been prosecuted. And it is outrageous for this administration to kowtow to the Chinese Communist Party by dropping these charges. Uh, we appreciate your sensitivity to it. We appreciate the information. Our senior counsel for global affairs, Mike Pompeo, and, of course, uh, tremendous job as Secretary of State and, and CIA. I mean, I can't even start going all the way back to Congress. But uh, we appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for all the insight and uh, opportunity to look forward to seeing you soon.